Well, welcome to this episode of Addicta Fishing. I'm your host, Captain Blair Wiggins. You know, every year we put together a show with footage that you haven't seen from the previous season. We call it Bits and Bites. We were down in the Dry Tortugas and we shot so many fish down there. We had enough footage for three shows. We even had footage that you didn't get to see. I broke out the offshore rod, tested that on a black fin tuna. Y'all check this out. I'm gonna go inside and do some shopping. Black fin. I don't think the bonitas are gonna eat that. Huh? I don't think the bonitas will eat that. Oh, okay. I'm hoping. Oh, close. That was a close one. It's coming back. Oh, for we got it. it. That's Blackie. <laughs> that was him. We checked it so out and came definitely. back for it. <laughs> you can definitely tell the black fins from the bonitas. In the water, that is, anyway. Because they're real black. I'm glad we're in the big boat today. Ugh. Hey Chris, working all through these bonitas, do I need to retie my knots or anything? Oh. Well, only if it breaks? Yeah, we'll wait till it breaks. I think we got enough fish here. We'll, uh, we'll get what we need done. What do you think is more powerful, a blackfin or a bonita of the same size? Blackfin all the way. Yeah. Tie him tail to tail, the blackfin will drown him all day long? I think so. <sighs> yeah, they really have a different fight too. The blackfins will generally stay down a little more. Do a screaming run. Do nice hard runs. Kind of like that? Just like that. Those bonitas, they'll get up on the surface. They'll run around, come back at you. It's just really crazy. I think we break more rods with bonitas than anything yeah. on my charter. Try to get them in quicker so you can get a black fin, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Need to go to the other gunnel. That's the first time I've used this metered line. Changes color about every 25 feet. So you know just when you can see the fish down there, you know just about how far he is down by the color of the line change. This is about ready, you wanna? All right. There we go. All right. Another nice one. Another nice tuna. Healthy. <laughs> oh, there he goes with a tuna walk again. They're definitely a pretty fish. And like all tunas, their peck fins, absolutely they will tuck back. If you can see right here, there's a ridge. And they tuck those fins back, and they're just like a football going through the water at Mach 1. Absolutely incredible. Tell you what, I am still feeling the effects from those black fin tuna down there in the Tortugas. If y'all ever get a chance to go down there and do it, highly recommend it. Up next, we even have some more footage that y'all haven't seen from our Tortuga trip with the Starbright crew. Right now, hunting season's right around the corner. I'm gonna do me some more shopping. Let's go oh, there we go. <clears throat> Well, welcome back to Bits and Bites. We're showing you this year's footage that you didn't get to see on Addictive Fishing this season. We caught so many fish down in the Dry Tortugas, we didn't even get to show you day three down there. But the one thing about day three, it was the first day of grouper season. So I bet you can guess what we were targeting down there. We had one come up, hit a flat line. There's so many grouper these days, we had a ball. Y'all check this out. Chris, what's your seasons around here as far as, you know, your grouper season, snapper season, and all that good stuff? 
Well, our uh, wintertime action, we, we got a lot of kingfish, uh, tunas, wahoos, a few sailfish come through that time of year. Our uh, springtime stuff, we're doing a lot of this reef action. We got the mutton spawn, uh, the permit are spawning on the reef, and uh, we get a good uh, sailfish run that time of year. And then more towards summertime, we'll start dolphin fishing, do a little bit of nighttime sword fishing as well. So uh, we got year-round action here. That's what's great about this place. There's always something to do. Oh, there was a hit. Oh, he smacked it. There he is. Would you want a big one? I think this is a big one. Looks like he has a little bit more behind him. I think you might be right. <laughs> That was a thump. There's some color. Mutton. Another mutton. Look at this one. Whoo. A beauty. Is that one beautiful fish right there or what? Whew. Awesome. Absolute beauty. Well, we're gonna take care of this one and uh, drop down for another. All right, Chris, we're gonna see what's on the bottom down here this time. See if we can get us a grown one. What's the, uh, what's the bottom structure like down here? Uh, we're sitting in about 90 feet of water just off the edge of a reef. No, uh, we're chumming here. There's a lot of yellow tails, and uh, we're drifting back for the yellow tails, and uh, dropping some baits down for the grouper. They're lurking underneath that school. A lot of good waves, too. Oh, you got one? Bonita's tearing us up. That ain't no Bonita. <laughs> that might be a grouper. Think, would you have that on the bottom? <laughs> Good, sir. Can you move this rod? What you think you got there? Hard to say. Ate a live bait on the surface. But he's heading down. Did you get them grouper coming all the way up to the top? They will sometimes. They come up following those yellow tails. Heck yeah. What's that? Black. Look at there. Look at that thing. On the spinning rod. All right. Look at there. That's what I'm talking about. That's another good eating size, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> Look at that. Got him on wire and everything. <laughs> I don't think they know it's grouper season yet. <laughs> How is your grouper population down here now? I've actually noticed a difference since they clo made that uh, closed season. Yeah. You know, you catch a lot more illegal fish out of season in, uh, you know, the shallow patches, all that area. Uh, it's like I think us. it's been good for us. It's like us with the red snapper up there. We are inundated with the red snapper up around yeah. Canaveral right now. I mean, you cannot hardly get a bait down without, without catching a red snapper. You keep telling me about it. I, I got to get you, up there and You got to come up and do it. You do this chum thing like you do up there, you yeah. have a thousand red snapper around the boat. <laughs> we, me and my son were out last summer and I actually had them around the boat. And I was holding a DOA uh, jumping mullet or DOA swimming mullet about that far above the water. And they were sticking their heads out to eat it. Oh it was a, the coolest thing I've ever seen. But that's got to be the second coolest thing I've seen in a while <laughs> right, there. right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice one. Well, cool beans.
Get down there where Mr. Big lives. That was wild. Group her up on the surface in 90 foot of water, huh? <laughs> They'll come right up. I've seen them up at 100 feet, 10 feet under the boat, just looking at them. Whoa! Yeah, you don't want to see him catch up in either. <laughs> I'll keep him out of the way for you, Blair. Ooh, you got some fight. Yeah, this one I think just realized he was hooked. I said, why I keep coming to the top? Well, I busted my bonita off for you. Oh, that's a good thing, because I think this one here oh, oh, is yeah. another right color one. Another black. Well, I'm glad we got nine people on the boat because <laughs> we're, we're going to fill the box today. Like uh, like you said, you're allowed to keep one per person, but we got nine folks we're going to feed up here over the next, uh, well, two nights anyway. We got one night left here in Key West and uh, maybe dinner and then we'll be heading home. All right. My first trip ever down to the Dry Tortugas, what can I say? It was an absolutely beautiful place to fish and we caught a ton of them. If you ever get a chance to go down there and do it, make sure you look up Chris Trossett. He'll put you on the fish, give you great memories, and send you home with sore arms. It is an absolute trip of a lifetime. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to be right back with some more Bits and Bites. Let's go then. There it is. Yes, sir. That would be Mr. Redfish there. <laughs> well, welcome back to Addictive Fishing. I'm your host, Captain Blair Wiggins, and this is our Bits and Bites episode. Up next, it wasn't really a fishing trip that we did, so it wasn't a show. We had just gotten the brand new Flats Blue Rods and went out and did some R&D on them. So I grabbed my cameraman and uh, we didn't want to let this footage just sit around. It was the first footage with the Flats Blue. Y'all check this out, I think you're gonna like it. I picked it up, I think. There he is. Yes, sir. That would be Mr. Redfish there. <laughs> well, it took him long enough to eat it on a nice winter day like this. So what we've done, we've come up on this flat here and basically we're soaking live bait on the bottom as these fish are slowly swimming by. I got the seven nine on right now. And this is the new generation two flats blue seven nine. And we got a big red on here. But I really like throwing the 7.9 for live bait because when I'm using live bait, it's just because I never know what size redfish I'm gonna hit. You know, one thing when you're fighting a fish with these rods is if you can see this whole flat here, there's nothing that this fish is gonna get really get tangled up on. So you really don't have to have your drag locked down. You don't have to fish with super heavy pound test line. Happen to be throwing Finn's wind tamer on here right now, and this is 10 pound test wind tamer on this 7.9. So many times I've seen people try to crank that drag down as hard as you can just to get the fish in as fast as you can. You don't have to do a real big hook set with these fish. It's just a little, little hook set with a wrist, and that's all it takes. Actually, this fish, what happened, the school was swimming toward us when we picked up the bait. I really didn't feel the hit and all I did was real tight on him and he set the hook himself. As soon as he felt a little bit of resistance, he turned around and set the hook himself. This is a grown one. Absolutely love the new generation twos. Come on, dude. Come on. Open up for me. That, my friends, is a beautiful Indian River redfish on the new 7.9 Flats Blue Generation 2 from Wright McGill. Absolutely a nice fish. 
Well, folks, the object of the game is to catch fish and put them in the boat, no matter what size, really, I think. And we got a triple tail over here floating. We're really rigged up for cobia, looking for cobia out here today. But uh, I got the 7-2 inshore rigged up, and the little triple tail are a lot of fun on these things. So let's see if we can get him to eat. There he is right there. Always have a 7-2 or something else rigged so you can catch whatever's out there. And we're cobia fishing today, and right now we got a triple tail on the line, and it is a good one. <laughs> and it's fun on this 7-2. Like I say, when you're, when you're out, always have something else rigged. What we're doing, we're cruising this blue line right here, and the triple tail are sitting about a foot, foot and a half down. And, uh, well, you're seeing what happens. Got the 7-2 rigged up with 10 pound wind tamer. As you can see, the wind's blowing like crazy out here. And uh, just having some fun with these guys until the cobia pop up. Got a 3,000 size Sabalos reel on here and about a 15 pound triple tail ready to get in the net. That was such a great take. And I absolutely love fighting these fish on smaller rods. Especially when you know you're gonna get them home. We're gonna stick him in the net. All right, probably, uh, I ain't gonna try to grab him. They got some serious gill plates. And there we go. Uh, whew. Now that's a fun fight on an inshore rod right there. Right on the 7-2 Flats Blue inshore series. And you can see it's the new Gen 2 rods because it's got the white instead of the black at the uh, rod butt. But uh, there you go. 7-2 does the trick every time. I tell you, these rods, they continue to amaze me every single fish I catch with them. From inshore to offshore, they have the strength and sensitivity and the power to get the job done. We even got a great new line of fly stuff as well. If y'all ever get a chance to check these rods out, I highly recommend it. One thing you're gonna really love about them though is the price. Y'all stay tuned. We're gonna be right back with some more addictive fishing and our Bits and Bites episode. Now later on in the day, moved over to the deep jigging rod. Now this rod here, awesome for those big group that we were pulling up way down deep. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what we were using out there during the Bits and Bites show. Now I can't show you all the rods because it's the whole season long and we use just all the rods in the whole lineup. But in general, when I go offshore fishing, you're gonna find me with my boat rod or the new offshore rods rigged with a 6,000 to an 8,000 size Sabalos reel. And I usually start out with 30 pound test wind tamer on there because you don't know what the wind's ever gonna do for you out there. You can't trust the weather guys, but I uh, had this one rigged up with 30 pound test and it did great for the black fin. Now later on in the day, moved over to the deep jigging rod. Now this rod here, awesome for those big group that we were pulling up way down deep. And I was using the Seaguar Blue Label. It just performs really well when you're working around all those rocks down there. It can scrape up against it and you're not gonna get busted off. And later on in the show, we did our R&D. I was using the 7-2 when we were out there catching the triple tail. And when we caught the redfish, I was using the 7-9 inshore models of the Flats Blue. And on this rig, we had it spooled up with 10 pound test fins wind tamer, 20 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon leader, and they were definitely getting the job done all year long. If y'all ever get a chance to come out and check out these rods, I highly recommend that you do so. But remember one thing, every fishing season starts right here at Dick's. Rig It Right by Wright and Miguel. Well, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Addictive Fishing that we call Bits and Bites. I had a blast catching all those fish and it would have been a shame to leave all those just laying on the editing room floor and you didn't get to see them. Till next week, don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. We got a ton of ways you can keep in touch with us now with Twitter, there's Google Plus, the Mogan Lounge, and there's also Instagram. Everybody's got their favorite fish on their phone. Make sure you show us your Mogan. Who knows what'll happen. Till next week, that's about it. We'll see ya. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. What we're Ooh. Well, welcome back to this. You know, every year we snorted <laughs> some more footage from the drive. What we're doing here today, Mr. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs>